RFK Jr. claims that seed oils are unhealthy because they're giving us all all kinds of very, very serious illnesses, body-wide inflammation. And he's not alone in the chorus that is singing against seed oils. There are lots of people on YouTube, some of them medical professionals, saying the very same things that he's saying, that seed oils are poison. So what's the deal? Are seed oils really bad for us? And is beef tallow actually better? Before I get into the research that answers that very question, let's make sure that we're on the same page when it comes Comes to what seed oils even are. Seed oils come from, as the name implies, the seeds of plants. Some examples include canola, soybean, and sunflower oil. Now, seeds do not give up their oil easily. If you try to just squeeze a seed, you're not really going to get anything out of it. Making seed oils takes a ton of processing. I recommend that you check out this throwback video from the Discovery Channel to get a better sense of how seed oils are made. To summarize the process, the seeds are cleaned, passed through a screw press, crushed, and mixed with a solvent, heated to evaporate the solvent, washed in another solvent to remove impurities, cooled to remove waxes, bleached, and heated again to remove any off odors. Seed oils can be found in things like dressings, bread, crackers, cookies, candy, shakes, tons of different things where you probably would not expect to find oil. And seed oils are also found obviously in foods that are fried with seed oils. Unless you only eat food that you make completely from scratch yourself, I can assure you that you have some seed oil containing foods in your cabinet right now. Now, what makes them different from oils that are derived from animals. The main distinguishing factor between plant oils and animal fats is the amount of saturated fat and unsaturated fat that they contain. For example, as you can see here, beef tallow, which is a fat derived from cows, contains a lot of saturated fat and very little polyunsaturated fat, while seed oils generally contain very little saturated fat and much more polyunsaturated fat. There are exceptions to this rule, but most seed oils have under 20% saturated fat. Saturated fats are normally stiff at room temperature while polyunsaturated fats tend to flow at room temperature. All right, so now we're all clear on the different types of fat. Let's get into the data. What does the data say about saturated fat versus unsaturated fat? The data from large studies with hundreds of thousands of participants who are followed for years and years on end overwhelmingly supports the conclusion that seed oils are superior to saturated fat for health. In this systematic review and meta-analysis of 13 studies, which had over 300,000 participants between them, it was found that linoleic acid, which is more abundant in seed oils, it's a type of polyunsaturated fat, was associated with a 15% lower risk of heart disease. What makes the evidence even stronger is the fact that there was a dose-response relationship. As saturated fat intake went down and linoleic acid intake went up, the risk of having heart issues or dying from heart disease went down significantly. These people were followed for between 5 and 30 years, not just weeks, years. We also have data from an even larger study which supports the same conclusion. In this paper, the authors analyzed data from over 800,000 people across 44 different studies who were followed for about 5 to 30 years, and they found that a higher linoleic acid intake was associated with a modestly lower risk of mortality from all causes, including cardiovascular disease and cancer. Again, linoleic acid is a type of fat that is more common in seed oils. As if that wasn't enough, I have a third paper for you. In another sizable research, Research study of over 500,000 people who were followed for a median of 16 years. Researchers found that, and I quote, butter consumption was positively associated with cancer mortality. Substituting corn oil, canola oil, or olive oil for equal amounts of butter or margarine was related to lower all-cause mortality and mortality from certain causes, including heart disease, diabetes, cancer, respiratory disease, and Alzheimer's disease. Again, this is data from over 500,000 people. Nothing to sneeze at. So there is a pretty clear consensus from these long-term studies. For my fellow research nerds out there, don't worry, I have data from clinical trials as well. In this Cochrane review of 15 randomized control trials with over 56,000 participants between them, the data showed that reducing intake of saturated fat in favor of polyunsaturated fat or carbs for at least two years was associated with a 17% lower risk of heart attack or stroke. 
There is also clinical trial evidence that when compared to polyunsaturated fat, saturated fat promotes more fat accumulation around the liver, aka fatty liver, which by itself is a risk factor for type 2 diabetes and heart disease. Outside of the comparison studies, saturated fats have also been shown to increase the risk of developing Parkinson's and dementia. So we can stop acting as if beef tallow, which is very high in saturated fat, is a panacea. I'm against food that has seed oils. When I was a kid, McDonald's was made with tallow fat. That was good for you. Your body needs that. It makes you healthy. This doesn't mean that you can't eat saturated fat or that saturated fat is all bad, but it does mean that it's not something that you should be consuming in very high amounts. The need to not overdo it with saturated fat is something that scientists have been alluding to for decades. This is not new information. I'm publishing this video now in 2025, but I love history, so I'm going to take you back for a little bit. There are studies from several decades ago, some of which were very small, I will say, which gave us insight into which type of fat was better for health and longevity. Here are several small studies from the 1950s. We also have data from the 1970s. In this study, 412 men with a history of heart attack were randomly assigned to either a high saturated fat diet or a high polyunsaturated fat diet. Just a reminder, polyunsaturated fats are the type of fats that are more common in seed oils. Their diets were tracked for five years and the high polyunsaturated fat diet led to lower cholesterol and a lower risk of heart attack. What's more is that these benefits were not just evident during the study. When the researchers followed up with these men six years later, they found that those that were in the high polyunsaturated fat group had lower rates of heart attack compared to those in the high saturated fat group. There are more studies that show the same thing, but I do not want to bore you, so I will just include them in the references linked below. We aren't done answering the question of which type of fat is better though, so don't click off the video yet. Despite this overwhelming evidence, there are still people out there promoting this message that seed oils are worse for your health than saturated fat. As I was doing the research for this video, I found quite a few videos with the same seed oils are poison message. And to be fair, I get why some people may think that way. I think there's a certain appeal to doing things the old fashioned way or the way that your parents or your grandparents did them, it can be comforting. And I think too that that is why certain things are trending now like cottagecore and trad wives, because we have this yearning to go back to the way that things were. However, just because people did things a certain way in the past, it doesn't automatically mean that that method was better. They were just doing what they could with the knowledge that they had and the tools that they had at the time. I will give the anti-seed oil crowd some credit though, because if you look up studies that support the conclusion that saturated fat is better than seed oils, you will find data. There are studies out there that show this. However, the existence of some studies which support saturated fat doesn't actually prove their point, and I'll explain why right now. The first reason is that the studies that compare saturated fat to seed oils and make saturated fat look superior are often too short to really prove that. People don't get heart attacks after eating poorly for two weeks, they get heart attacks after eating poorly, among other risk factors, for several years. So to really understand which oil is better for you, you need long-term studies that last several years or even decades. To really bring this point home, let's take a quick look at the studies that were presented by Paul Saladino in his video. This study included just 13 subjects, lasted eight weeks, and showed increased oxidation with polyunsaturated fats. This study from 1991 included just 26 subjects who were placed on either a high polyunsaturated fat or high monounsaturated fat diet and showed the same thing. After 12 weeks, there was more oxidation with the high polyunsaturated fat diet. And these three studies also show the same thing, that a high intake of polyunsaturated fat fat is linked to more oxidation or inflammation in the body. The thing is though, these studies don't actually prove that seed oils are bad for you. What these studies do show is that in the short term, consuming polyunsaturated fats can increase some markers of oxidation in the blood. Oxidation is generally considered to be a bad term because it's associated with cell and tissue damage when it is in excess. However, we don't necessarily need to be afraid of oxidation. Oxidation is a natural biological process. It happens all the time and it's happening in your body right now. Unfortunately, our bodies also have ways of addressing oxidation. Ever heard of antioxidants? That's their purpose. My other issue with these studies is that they all lasted two to three months, which is not unusual for clinical trials, but it's not enough to tell us what happens after eating more saturated fat compared to seed oils after 10, 20, 30 years. It's entirely possible that the increased oxidation is just an acute change that would go away over time. Another thing I wanna mention is that these studies do not prove that seed oils cause heart disease, diabetes, dementia, or any disease for that matter. They only show an increase in oxidation. Any associations between that 
knowledge and disease are theoretical, not factual. The last point I want to make is that these studies all had very small sample sizes between 10 and 150 people. This doesn't make these studies useless, but those numbers cannot compare to the data that we have from large studies with hundreds of thousands of people who are followed for decades at a time. Yes, the study designs are different, but the amount of people included in a study is still important for understanding how we can apply the results of the study to the real world. There are a few larger studies mentioned in videos by What I Learned and Nina Teicholz on the channel Swiss Ray that seem to point to seed oils as a cause of cancer and heart disease, but that evidence is not strong either. Let's talk about why. In the multiple risk factor intervention trial, there was a higher rate of lung cancer in the group that ate less saturated fat. However, when researchers looked not just at what group the participants were in, but specifically the fats in their blood, which is the most accurate reflection of how their bodies were metabolizing what they were eating, found that higher levels of polyunsaturated fat in the blood were not associated with an increased risk of cancer. The Oslo study gets brought up in this debate too, but as you can see here, the authors concluded that the group that consumed less saturated fat and ate more polyunsaturated fat, among other changes to their diet, had lower rates of cancer for the first 25 years of follow-up for this study. The LA Veterans Study is another study that people like to use to show that seed oils are poison, but this study had a couple of issues. There was a trend of increased death from cancer in the group consuming more seed oils, but that trend did not reach statistical significance. What the authors did find that was statistically significant was that the group consuming more saturated fat had higher rates of death from atherosclerosis. In terms of the study design, there were two glaring issues with this study. Number one is that the comparison groups were not completely identical at the start of the study. There was an uneven distribution of smokers between groups. Number two is that twice as many people dropped out of the seed oil group compared to the amount of people that dropped out of the saturated fat group before the study was even over. And honestly, the reason is kind of funny. Part of why people kept dropping out of the seed oil group is because they were asked to drink a filled milk prepared from specially deodorized and deflavored soybean oil. Delicious. The other two studies that I'm about to show you do seem to legitimately show an increased risk of negative outcomes associated with seed oils, and they deserve a closer look. The Minnesota Coronary Experiment is a large clinical trial with thousands of participants, which showed that replacing saturated fat with seed oils was linked to an increased risk of death. The Sydney Diet Heart Study also showed the same thing after five years. So how can we make sense of this data? We have overwhelming evidence that shows that seed oils are fine to consume, but we also do have legitimate evidence which shows that seed oils might be dangerous. In my opinion, it comes down to looking at ratios. As the old saying goes, the dose makes the poison. You see, the whole time I've been saying seed oils as if all seed oils are the same, but the truth is that they're not all created equally. Seed oils actually contain blends or mixes of different types of fats in them in different ratios. The two fats that you need to know about for this section are omega-6s and omega-3s. As an example, sesame oil has far more omega-6 than omega-3 with a ratio of 138 to 1, whereas canola oil has a ratio of just 2 to 1. So one of these has a lot of omega-6 relative to omega-3, and the other one doesn't have that much omega-6 relative to omega-3. In studies that showed that seed oils were worse for health than saturated fat, the participants were asked to consume seed oils that have a very high ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. Soybean oil, corn oil, and safflower oil. When it comes to the balance between omega-6 and omega-3, the data is pretty clear. That increasing that ratio too far is not good for your health, especially because the average American's diet is already imbalanced in favor of omega-6. You see, back when we were primarily hunter-gatherers, our diets used to look very different. Human diets 10,000 years ago are thought to have included similar amounts of omega-6 and omega-3 in a ratio of about 2 to 1. This is kind of a guesstimate because obviously no one that was around back then is still around now to tell us the ratios of fats that they used to eat. On top of that, it is also really difficult to account for all of the many different cultures that have ever existed around the world to know what ratios of fats were over time across continents. Still, the theory is that we used to eat similar amounts of omega-6 and omega-3. So if you fast forward now to the 1900s, the intake of omega-6 crept up while intake of omega-3 started to take a nosedive. People started eating more grains and less greens. In the 20th century, seed oils took off in popularity as technological advances made them cheaper to produce. Food manufacturers started to include more of these oils in their products. Palm oil, cottonseed oil, soybean oil, and canola oil were among the most widely used. Farmers also started feeding their livestock more grains instead of their normal diet of mostly grass, which led to a higher amount of omega-6 in the animal's tissues. What animals 
eat literally becomes a part of them and then a part of us when we consume them. You aren't just what you eat, you are also what your food eats. Grass-fed beef contains not only more omega-3, but also less fat overall, less saturated fat, and more monounsaturated fat per serving. It really is better for you than grain-fed meat because the tissues of those animals are different. This applies to the milk and eggs produced by farm animals too. Milk from grass-fed cows contains more omega-3 than the milk of cows fed the conventional way. And chickens that eat their normal diet of grass and bugs produce eggs with more omega-3. Taking all of these changes into consideration, we started consuming way more omega-6 than omega-3 through pretty much everything that we eat. Scientists estimate that per capita intake of soybean oil increased a thousand fold during the 20th century. This change in our diet is reflected in our body's tissues, specifically our fat tissues. Over the course of about 50 years, the concentration of linoleic acid increased from 9% to 22% in our fatty tissues. So while omega-6 fatty acids are essential for your health, you need to eat them, we have started eating too much and that is the problem. Research suggests that we should all be eating less omega-6 and more omega-3 to bring the ratio between those two fats closer to where it was in ancestral times. The best ratio depends on what outcome you're looking at, and there aren't a ton of studies on this topic either for the outcomes I'm about to mention, but there is some evidence that having a lower ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 is good for better heart health, blood sugar levels, management of rheumatoid arthritis, and even better sperm quality, as well as a lower risk of developing asthma, eczema, breast cancer, death from cancer, and death from heart disease. So from this perspective, I would say absolutely, it's not a bad idea to consume less of those seed oils that have a lot of omega-6 and very little, if any, omega-3. Looking at this chart from Wikipedia, you can see that the oils with the highest ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 are grapeseed oil, saffron, flower oil, brazil nut, sesame, and sunflower. And the lowest are walnut oil, hemp seed oil, canola oil, cottonseed oil, and flaxseed or linseed oil. Canola oil is a really popular cooking oil. It's what I have in my kitchen and probably what you have in your kitchen as well. So it's kind of nice to see that it does have a lower ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. But you can't stop there though, because the seed oil in your food doesn't just come from when you're cooking food at home. You need to pay close attention to the things you're eating that come in a package. Earlier on in this video, I mentioned that our intake of soybean oil has gone through the roof. That's not because people are adding tons of soybean oil to their food at home. It's because soybean oil is added to a lot of processed packaged food. It's in salad dressings, ice cream, crackers, cookies, mayonnaise, and nutri -Grain bars, among other things. Limiting your intake of ultra processed foods in favor of consuming more whole foods will also help to bring that ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 back to where it should be. So again, balance is key. You can eat omega-6 and omega-3 and even saturated fat and live to 100. Now, did I just say that eating saturated fat is okay? Yes, I did. Including some saturated fat in your diet is fine, but if you're like the average American, you are already eating more than you need to. Americans consume about 12% of their calories from saturated fat, which is above the recommended limit of 10%. So you really don't need to start adding more beef tallow or any other form of saturated fat to your diet because if you're like the average person, you're already eating enough. And we actually, as a nation, could stand to cut back on our intake of saturated fat. The one fat that we should be eating more of is omega-3s. So fatty fish, walnuts, flax seeds, those are the sorts of things you want to be eating more of. You don't need more beef towel, don't worry. How you consume your fats matters too. Even though the data shows that consuming seed oils in general is fine, I still wanna talk for a moment about the way that seed oils are made. Refined oils get heated several times during the extraction and refining processes, and exposing polyunsaturated fats to high heat facilitates the formation of trans fats, free fatty acids, and oxidation products like aldehydes. Heat exposure also reduces the amount of polyphenols, a class of plant antioxidants, found in the oil. For this reason, I think it's best to choose seed oils that have gone through as little refining as possible. At the top of my list is extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil is different from refined seed oils because it is made by simply pressing the olives without applying heat or chemicals. This minimal processing allows the oil to retain more of the polyphenols that make it an antioxidant and nutrient rich product. It's a high quality oil that has also been shown to benefit heart health. Olive oil is not great for deep frying though, so for those days where you really want to enjoy some delicious deep fried 
food or treats, I would recommend choosing an oil with a higher smoke point like canola oil. Okay, so I covered a lot in this video. I'm not gonna add anything else. Here's a quick summary of everything that we went over and the main things that you wanna make sure you don't forget after watching this video. One is that seed oils are fine to include in your diet in moderation. Two is that saturated fat is also fine to include in your diet in moderation. Three is that when choosing a cooking oil, it is best to opt for those that have gone through as little refining as possible and those that have a lower ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. Four is that most people would benefit from eating more foods that are high in omega-3 fatty acids like salmon, walnuts, and flax seeds. And last but not least, five is that most people could stand to eat less ultra-processed foods which contain lots of hidden seed oils as well as excess sugar and salt. And that brings me to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this analysis of seed oils, please give the video a like, share it, and subscribe for more content like this. If this video made you change your mind at all about seed oils and fats, please comment below and share with us what your perspective is now on this whole debate. Take care.